Hi there, this is the Jared Walker, and this is going to be a comprehensive tutorial covering the pin tool in Illustrator. It's also going to cover the selection tool and the direct selection tool, the black and white arrows. Uh, these are the three most uh, commonly used tools in Illustrator, and uh, we're going to go over every single thing that you can do with them, all of the different versions of the pin tool, and uh, how it affects anchor points, handles, and segments, along with each one of the tool's uh, uses with the modifier keys, the Control-Alt-Shift keys. So we're going to go into all of these. Um, this file we're looking at is available for free in the description to download. It's going to go over all the stuff I'm going to go over with you here. It's all written out and explains it all. It's a nice little shortcut uh, to explain every last aspect of it. Um, I'll go over the layers here real quick. In the layers, we have a tracing pad, which is uh, so you can practice on these images here. You can draw over them with the pen tool. Um, below that, we have the examples, which are these shapes here. If I disable them, you'll see. Those are the examples. We have the text, obviously, and then the images in the background. So in this case, I'm going to uncheck the examples for this, uh, this dem demonstration. I'm going to zoom in to the very start here. So we're starting off with the bare essentials. Uh, don't skip this video just yet. This part is going to be super, super simple, but it, uh, but we have to start with the basics first, right? So uh, select the pin tools, the fifth option here in the tools box. Click once to create an anchor point. Click once again to create a second anchor point, and these two will be connected by a segment. If I click and drag, then I'll pull out handles. And the further I pull them out, the more curved my new segment will be. The closer I have them to the original anchor point that I clicked, the sharper it will be, the, the more it will be a straight line. So I'll pull this out some. If I hover over the original point that I left, my, anchor, my cursor changes to have a circle instead of just the pin tool. So I'll hover over it and it turns into a circle, which means that this will close the path if I click on this anchor point. So I will do so. And now I have a closed path. That is the basic functionality to the pen tool, how to create a shape just by clicking in different sections and using the, the handles that come out to create uh, these curved shapes, these Bezier curves, and how to connect back your path to make it a closed path. Um, the most primary function for the selection tool is to deselect objects that are already selected by clicking on the artboard or to click and drag those objects around to move them. And those are the most basic functions of them. Let's go to the next section. The inside of a shape is called the fill. That's what this green section is. The outside uh, edge of it is called the stroke. That's the blue section there. Um, you, can mix, you can use the selection tool to select a shape. And when you do, its colors will be adjustable here in the toolbox. Uh, there are several other places you can adjust it as well, but this is the, a quick way of doing so. There's a little arrow here as well that will swap them, so it swaps the fill and the stroke colors, um, or you can just double-click on them and change their color like so. Double-click on the box here in the Tools section. You can also adjust the stroke width. Here on the side, I've got the stroke panel pulled up. You can also find that it go under Window and Stroke if you don't see that. And I'm going to change this from 18 points to 4 points and it's going to be adjusted because that object was selected when I changed that. We'll go to the next section. You can click and hold the pin tool icon, which is here in the tool box. Click and hold on that, and it will pull out your different options. So you've got the add anchor point tool, the delete anchor point tool, and the convert anchor point tool. So there's different versions of the pin tool that you can use that have different functionalities. If I click this little tear off button here, I get it like so, and I like to keep it up here in this top corner. I basically have it up there all the time because the pen tool is so useful in Illustrator. So far we've been using just the pen tool on its own. I'm going to switch over to the Add Anchor Point tool, and I'm going to click anywhere on a path. In this case, you see that there's an anchor here and here, and there's just a segment between them with no anchor points. If I click anywhere in there, I can create a new anchor point. There's also a Delete Anchor Point tool. If I use that, then I can remove anchor points, like this one here. There's also the Convert Anchor Point tool. With it selected, I can click on a, an anchor point that has handles. Clicking on it once will remove its handles. And now this, which was rounded, is a sharp point because the handles have been removed. I can also click on a single individual handle to remove just it, while the other handle on an anchor point is still 
uh, it's still visible and um, at its original position. You can also click and drag out from an anchor point to create new handles that will move in tandem with one another. And you can click and drag a single handle to convert it to be moved independently from the other. I'm going to deselect this shape by clicking on the artboard with the selection tool. Uh, with the selection tool, when I click on a shape, it selects every anchor point in that shape, so I can move the shape as one individual object. The direct selection tool, the white arrow on the other hand, allows you to select individual anchor points and to adjust them on their own. So I can select a single anchor point and relocate it like so, click and drag it to a different position. You can also hold down the shift key to select multiple anchor points. So I'm just going to hold down shift and click on multiple anchor points and I can move those together while the rest of the anchor points are stationary. The direct select tool can also click and drag out a window and any anchor points inside that window become selected to allow you to control what is selected in your piece. If you select a single uh, anchor point with handles like this one, you can click either handle and if they are in line with another, you can move them both at the same time in tandem. On anchor points where the handles are not in a straight line, you can move the handles independently like so. And finally, uh, you can also click on a segment on its own and move a single segment. Let's go to the next section. So that was the basics. This next section will cover use of the modifier keys. You can choose the selection tool, the black arrow, and while clicking and dragging a shape, if you hold down Alt, you'll see the cursor changes to have uh, a black on top of white shape. You can release it, and you'll create a copy. So clicking and dragging while holding down Alt creates a copy. If you click and drag while holding down Shift, it moves your object in a straight line at 45 uh, degree increments. This is useful if you want to move something directly to, a, to the side. You can also combine these. If you hold down Shift to constrain and hold down Alt at the same time and let go, then you will create a copy directly in line with the original. This can be very useful for a number of, of things. Uh, finally, with the selection tool uh, selected, you can hold down control and it will temporarily give you access to the direct select tool. If I release the control key, I'm still using the selection tool. But if I hold down control, I get my white arrow instead. And so you have access to some of the uses of the white arrow uh, very quickly by just holding on the control key. Now we're going to be using the direct select tool, the white arrow. With the direct select tool on an anchor point, you can click and drag an anchor point and then hold down Alt and it will create a copy of what you're dragging out, but only that anchor point and the segments that are connected to it. Now if I were to move this elsewhere, you'll see that it created a shape based off of what I pulled out from that anchor point. The original one stays intact and it creates a duplicate, but only of that anchor point and the two segments that on, on either side of it. If I hold down shift, just like before, while clicking and dragging, it moves at 45 degree increments. And holding down the control key switches back to the black arrow temporarily, so I can select the entire object and all of its anchor points, or I can click off of it to remove the selection that I had. You can also use modifier keys with the direct selection tool on handles. So if I select a single anchor point and adjust its handles, like this one here, I can hold down the Alt key, my cursor changes to have a plus sign, and I can move this single uh, anchor point, this single handle uh, independently of the other handle. Holding it on Shift while dragging it will constrain it to be at 45 degree angles. And finally, we'll use the Pin tool. We'll switch back to the pen tool here. And if you hold down control, you'll temporarily have the selection tool, the white arrow. If you hold down alt, you'll temporarily have the convert anchor points tool at your disposal. Uh, now you won't have these tools with their ability to uh, use modifier keys because you're already in a different tool using a modifier key. So if you try that, it'll give you an error sound. With the pen tool, 
Like before, you can draw out anchor points and pull the handles out. Hold down shift while pulling the handles out and you'll be constrained to 45 degree angles. While drawing with the pen tool, you, if you put the anchor point in the wrong position, if you're still clicking and dragging out the, the handles, you can hold the space bar to reposition that point. This is extremely useful, especially if you're tracing something and you accidentally uh, click your anchor point down the wrong place, you can hold down the space bar and reposition it to be on top of the correct area of the image. This functionality is missing from the pen tool in Photoshop, and I think it actually uh, hampers it quite a bit. As I said, it's, it can be extremely useful, particularly when uh, when tracing over something, but just in general, it's very helpful to be able to quickly reposition it on the fly while you're drawing something and making a shape. I'm going to delete that shape. And the next thing is if you click and drag uh, as you're pulling out the handles, if you hold down Alt, you can pos uh, change the, uh, the forward-facing handle independently of the, the previous one. This is really good if you're trying to make a corner, for example, and then click and drag out a new area. Um, as, you're, as you're clicking and dragging, wherever the backwards facing uh, uh, handle is, is at, whenever you hold down the Alt key, that is where it will stay. So it, I, I could hold down Alt here really close and be close, or I could pull out really far and it'd be really far. But the moment I hold down the Alt key, that backwards facing handle is going to be uh, stuck wherever it was at. And then I can change the forward facing handle and put it in whatever position I like. Now this path is selected. This segment here from this anchor point to this anchor point has nothing between them. It's just a segment. If I put my pen tool over it, it adds a little plus sign next to the cursor. It lets you use the add anchor point tool uh, on the segment uh, and it temporarily gives you access to that because you're you're hovering over a segment that doesn't have an anchor point in that area. I'll click once and it adds a new anchor point there. I can also hover over an area that has an anchor point and I get a minus sign on my cursor. If I click then I'll remove that anchor point. So it gives you access to the delete anchor point tool and the add anchor point tool uh, very quickly on a path so you don't need to necessarily switch between them as often. And we'll move down some here. And finally, with the modifier keys and these additional advanced options with the pen tool, if you have an open path like we do here, and you hover over the endpoint, this anchor, you'll see the cursor creates a diagonal line. If I click there, and then I go back to the other endpoint, you'll see I get the close path symbol, and this way I can close a path. You can also hover over an endpoint and click once, and then continue pulling out more shapes. As you see, I clicked once and it made a um, it made a sharp angle here because it has a handle coming out this way. But I clicked once and it didn't create a new handle for going out in this direction. So if I were to grab the pen tool again and hover over this end point and get that line tool, instead of clicking once, I can click and drag. And just like before, I can hold down the Alt key to modify the direction in which that forward-facing uh, handle will go. And then again, I can either leave it open or I can close it by clicking on this endpoint here and make another closed path. So a lot of control over the pen tool. It's extremely uh, powerful in, in, uh, in Illustrator. Um, in conjunction with the selection tool and the direct selection tool, uh, you have you can completely control every aspect of the points and the anchor points and the handles on any object to make its shape perfect. So it's uh, it gives you complete control over uh, over your your designs. Um, as I said, we have some options over here. I'm going to lock this examples back down and just go over to the uh, tracing pad, and we'll just zoom in here. Um, all of these images that I've supplied are in the public domain. They're all raster images as well. They're not vector. So uh, they're here just for um, your practice purposes. If we were to zoom in on the dog here, this is, I believe, from Wikipedia, uh, this, this dog image. It's released into the public domain. Uh, if I click here on this corner part and pull out my 
my handle a little bit and then click there on that corner part and pull out the handle a little bit and then hold down alt I can move and reposition this down here and click and drag out some and like so and you can go through and try and trace these you may need to turn the uh, the fill off to be able to do this uh, properly but um, I'll go ahead and do that now turn the fill off uh, but this is a, a good example, pretty simple shape here to be able to try out your, your use of the pin tool and the select and direct selection tools to adjust the, uh, the handles and anchor points um, to make sure they're in the correct position. Um, there is also a leaf here, and this is good for uh, whenever you're going around these corner parts of the leaf, like right there. So I just pulled out, it's the, the previous handle is going out too far in this next one I'm going to need to hold down the alt key to reposition it to go in this direction um, or you may just want to connect it up before it hits the corner like this one right here is 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 not is uh, not actually on the corner it's just before it hold down alt to switch from the pin tool to the convert uh, anchor points tool and just click and drag this down here so it's a little bit closer and then there on this edge Hold down the spacebar to reposition that anchor point and pull it out so it creates a nice little smooth curve. So these are just play around with the different modifier keys that you've learned here and see what you can make. So this is a really bad example of what I was doing here. I was more focusing on teaching the use of the, the tool and the different modifier keys, like holding down space to reposition your shape um, and holding down Alt to move it around or when you let go, coming back and holding down Alt to adjust a specific uh, anchor point. So uh, try and, and make these exact as you can get them and learn how to use uh, the different modifier keys and the different tools here to to correct your your um, your path that you generate. Um, this next guy here, this creature, is uh, is also in the public domain. Both of these, the leaves and the creatures, both came from Deviant Art, um, and they're released into the public domain, so you can do whatever you like with them. Uh, this is a good example of something that you can kind of challenge yourself on. Uh, you can choose how much detail you want to put into this one if you wanted to, tr to try to tackle it. You could just outline it. Or if you wanted to, you could also do each of these individual um, inside shapes. So this color here, this this darker section of it, and make its whole path around because there's only like six or seven colors in here. So uh, it's not too over overdone here to uh, to go through and do all the layers to create the different shadings, the different colors. So this lighter brown and mid this base colored mid-tone brown and the slightly darker shadowed brown and then these lighter tone uh, beiges and dark beige um, and then this gray rock and dark gray and then the black outline um, and maybe this like golden brown for the eyes so and some white so there's there's a little bit to it but uh, that's a good example of uh, of a creature in uh, that could be easily made in, in Illustrator if you wanted to take the time to try and do that one. And then finally, we got some French curves down here, which you can try tracing. Um, French curves are just an artist tool. They've been around for centuries. Uh, artists will throw these down on a piece of paper and kind of just trace around this edge uh, whenever they need a specific uh, curved shape, the same way you would trace around like a bottle cap if you needed a nice perfect circle. Uh, sometimes artists need less perfect curves and they need these more... Uh, organic shape. So um, this one is a photo I took myself and released into the public domain. Um, so go ahead and try and trace around these in, uh, in, in Illustrator using your newfound knowledge of the pin tool, the selection tool, and the direct selection tool, and see uh, how accurate you can make them. So uh, if you're having trouble with it, just keep working on it because a lot of people struggle with the pin tool. But once you get used to it, it's you can work with it really fast. As you see with these modifier keys, a lot there's a lot of overlap between them. There's a lot of um, of logic to it, like the shift key in most of them will uh, constrain to 45 degree angles. So that's pretty universal throughout it. Um, the control key often will switch between the selection or the the direct selection tools, so you can quickly switch to uh, selecting something in a different manner. So it's 
it tries to be in a very logical um, usage. The Alt key often will let you adjust an individual um, handle uh, off of an anchor point. So they try to make it as, as simple to understand the reasoning behind these modifier keys. So try and get used to them. Uh, use them as much as you can and really challenge yourself to use them a lot so you get um, get a lot of practice with them because they are extremely important when working in Illustrator. And uh, the pen tool in Photoshop is like 90% the same. It's kind of watered down a little bit, um, which I don't understand. They could have just as easily just reused the same pen tool there and had it be just as effective in Photoshop. But um, nonetheless, uh, you'll, whatever you learn here is almost entirely applicable to Photoshop as well. So um, try it all out. As I said before, everything you're seeing here is in the public domain. I'm releasing this file, this Illustrator file, and all of its contents out there into the public domain. Um, it looks like, let me revert it one more time. It should look like this. The file I'm releasing is for Illustrator CS2 and above. So anything from like 2002 and on, you should be good. So basically every version of Illustrator that's even out there in the wild anymore. Um, yeah, so go ahead and give it a, give it a try. And, uh, and if you have any comments, leave them below. Um, let me know what you think. If you want, if you need help with anything, uh, ask below and I'll, I'll uh, shoot you a message. So thanks for watching.